Welcome back to Switch to Linux and another Distro Wars. I have a sidekick here. Yeah. Um, so today it's not as much of a Distro War, but a script installer war. We're looking at Anarchy versus Arch 5, which are two scripts that will get you a pure Arch install. Now, these are different from some of the other ones we did recently where we had Antergos, we were looking at Arco Linux, and maybe some Arch Labs. And then all of those actually have a few extra things added in addition to regular Arch. But both Anarchy and Arch 5, they're not considered distributions. They're just considered install scripts in order to get a pure Arch running without having to go through all of the, the documentation and all of the line for line. They're each going to behave a little bit differently, and they're each going to serve certain specific purposes. So let's first have a look at their websites. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the final product and then how to get the installation done. But because of the length of time it takes to get, get these installed, particularly on Arch 5, then uh, we're not actually going to walk through it. That's why we're going to show you the final product and then we'll show you how to install it. So uh, we'll go ahead and first jump on over to the websites and then we'll proceed with looking at the two distributions. All right, so over here on Anarchy Linux, simple intuitive terminal-based Arch Linux installer, and somewhere around here, it basically will tell you, no, it is not a distribution. Down here, is it a distribution? No, it is exclusively an installer of the Arch Linux distribution, but not a distribution itself. In other words, it gets you pure Arch easily. So you do download it. If you head on over there to download the guy, and uh, when you download it, then you're going to have the system there. Let me grab the, the size of that for you guys. So Anarchy Linux is 715 megabytes of a download versus pure Arch Linux is 703 megabytes. So a little bit different. All right, so you boot up the, um, the Anarchy, and then it's going to run you through the installation script. Cat. All right. Now, uh, if you will look over at ArchFi, they don't even have a full separate page, but they have a GitHub page. You do need to download the regular Pure Arch. You need to get that guy booted up, and then you're going to go on to Git, and you're going to grab the ArchFi script either from uh, SourceForge or from... Um, uh, or from their GitHub repository, and then you're just going to bash the script. When you go ahead and do that, then it's going to give you the options to run through all of your system settings and all that, and then it will finally land you eventually on a full desktop. So with that, let's go ahead and jump on over to the uh, Anarchy Linux, and then we'll look at what that installer looks like. All right, so here we are on our login screen. Now, I went with Budgie with these guys, which ended up being a bad choice because ArchFi does not give you the option to install Budgie. So I just landed on the desktop and installed Budgie. So uh, we'll kind of walk through how you do that. So just go, go ahead and log in here. And what we ended up with is just a perfectly configured budgie linux now it does set us up with a the bars on the bottom instead of on the top so there is a little bit of extra theming here you do have the option to select all of the different settings so we're not going to go through what's installed because everything that's on here i literally asked it to install so the point is though as we land on a final desktop that is working just fine Here's our uh, HTOP. We have 627 megabytes of RAM being used. Let's make sure that we can actually access network drives. So it can access, it can find and access all my network drives. So if I go ahead and do that, then uh, we can actually get in there and see the network drives. So out of the box, it's going to have all of the configurations. We went with uh, LibreOffice uh, Fresh, I think, is what I put on both of these guys. Maybe I did still, because if I did fresh on Arch, it should actually be 7 at this point, I thought. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Uh, so here's 6.5.2, so I could check which version I have, but 
You can see that uh, everything is set up right. We've landed on the, the single desktop that we wanted. We do have a nice anarchy themed logo down here. So while it is just technically an arch installer, it does give you a little bit of the extra theming. The theming is very nice. So it's not direct out of the box vanilla theming. Uh, you should of course be able to change all of that at your desire. So with that, let's go ahead and uh, have a look at how this script works. All right, so it's going to land us on this page here where we have the options. We can do Anarchy Installer, number one. We can do the Anarchy Update, number two. Update Arch Linux Keys, Connection Test, System Information. We're just going to run through our installer. It does help to hit Enter, not Shift. And then here you can choose your various settings. So we're starting with English, U.S. English. So we can download and rank mirrors. We can edit the mirror list manually, or we can skip updating mirrors. So we can do that and then select your country code here. Default must be um, United States. I don't know for sure, but there you go. So we went ahead and updated that. That'll take just a moment here to finish setting up the mirror list. All right, so here just uh, select your desired location. So United States is just fine. And then your time zone and New York. There we are. Now we have the option to auto partition the drive. So yes, we'll go ahead and auto partition this. EXT4. So recommend between uh, 512 and 1024. So I think 1024 would probably be better. So let's go ahead and do that. Auto partitioning. And then we're going to write our changes. So this is making changes to the disk. Now, most of the settings in both of these scripts, if you just go ahead and use the default it starts you on, you're generally going to be okay. All right, so here you have Anarchy Desktop, Anarchy Desktop LTS. Uh, we have Anarchy Server, Anarchy Advanced. So we're going to go through here, and then here you can select your desktop environment. We have Budgie Cinnamon GNOME Openbox XFCE 4. Now, there's actually going to be a place to install extra desktops later. So just pick with one of these. So we'll go ahead and do that. And then setting a root password, I'm going to enter my super secret password that's definitely not 123. It's setting all that up. And then now we can add a new user or we can edit or we can be done. If we hit done at this point, we are going to be stuck with only that root user. So we're going to go ahead and set up a new user. We'll call him the anarchist kitty. Don't type on my keyboard. Kitty, stay away from the keyboard. <laughs> Kitty's like, I want to enter a super secret password that you won't actually know. <laughs> All right. So do you want to enable administrative privileges for, for the anarchist? <laughs> sure. Why not? All right. Now we're done. And then, uh, so would you like to install some common software? So we can hit a list of software or we can say no. So this part here, we're not going to go through all this part. Uh, this will probably be about the part we come to an end here. But you're going to want to go through each category and then you just hit space bar on each setting that you would like to add. Let me just go ahead and do one, uh, one, one of these. There's LMMS if you do like music production stuff. Kind of keep going. Push OK and then it's going to be adding those into the list. And then do you want to add these two packages, Audacity and Clementine? Hit enter. And then you're going to go through each section to do that. All right. So we get down to the bottom. This is where you can install extra desktop environments. So if you want something other than the first ones given to us, you can go ahead and do that. And then at this point in time, you can go through the install. All right. So actually that finished in pretty short order. So uh, before we jump on over to... Uh, Arch5, we have the option here to reboot system, power off. Uh, we can turn on command prompt, chroot into the installed system. We can view the install log. We can add a user or we can install extra software. So those are all of our options. Now let's go have a look at Arch5. All right, so here we are on the desktop with ArchFi, and uh, this one's pure vanilla. We have our, our GNOME logo up there, our GNOME foot up there in the corner, and everything is set up and themed and configured as it always is so in, um, uh, in this particular system here. We've got uh, files. Let me see how it's themed. I never looked at how it was themed. So yeah, it's just basic, raw, vanilla, budgie. 
no differences, no changes. So if you are looking for the purest form of arch, then this one happens to be it. Uh, it's going to be a little bit better. Although people were saying in the comments that there is actually a in. Uh, oh, I thought I had installed HTOP. Let's go ahead and install that. I thought I installed HTOP on that, but I guess I did not. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there is, uh, I guess, a uh, default installer that, or an advanced installer that will give you a vanilla on Anarchy if you want it. This is running 587, so a little bit uh, less memory on there. Everything else is going to be things that I set and pre-installed, so we're not going to actually see anything uh, else there. Let's see. So this is... This one here is also six, so maybe seven's not pushed out to Arch yet. I thought it was by now, but maybe not. All right, maybe I should run updates on my own Arch system to, to see what it's doing. So there's kind of our setup. Now what we're going to do is we'll go ahead and show you how the install script of this guy happens to work. So let's go ahead and shut down, and we'll reboot into the, the setup script. All right, so here we are. So all we're going to do to run the ArchFi script is that we are going to just grab the regular Arch ISO image. We're going to get this far, and then this is the point where you would go ahead and start running your installation. Now what we're going to do is on this screen here, we are going to grab the ArchFi script. If the kitty will stop trying to type on my keyboard here. So this is actually going to be in the link down there in the description. You can go to the ArchFi website and let me just double check that for typos since I had a kitty there. I think we're good. So you can see it's running, it's grabbing its, its thing there. And then once it's done, we just go SH ArchFi. And then now we are set up. Now the ArchFi script is going to give you a lot more customizable options. So you can set or not set print settings, SSH settings, Samba settings, all these types of things that you can do. You can configure or not configure a variety of different uh, system utilities and such. So if you are looking for something a lot more custom, then ArchFi is going to be better. If you're looking for something a little bit faster, a little bit easier, you're going to be looking at Anarchy. So Anarchy actually took about 10 minutes to get set up. This guy here, I've never successfully set up a full operating system with ArchFi in less than an hour. So I'm just going to walk you through just some of the initial basic setup and then we'll kind of uh, wrap it up to there. That's why I showed you what it looks like first. So first we're going to start with selecting our language, our keyboard layout, and once we get past kind of our, our basic defaults, then um, uh, once we get past our basic defaults, then what we're going to do is it's going to ask us for uh, various options. And usually whatever its default is, is oftentimes what we want to do. So here we're going to auto partition with GPT and then select the disk. All data is going to be erased. Now, if you're going to be paying attention here, it will actually tell you where these are. Uh, actually, it won't tell you here. You'd actually have to go in and look at the, uh, if you go down and edit the partitions, you'll kind of see what the partitions are because they don't put them necessarily in in a logical order. Oh, hold on. Hit cancel and back. And now select partitions and install. But what it's going to do is boot is SDA2. Swap is SDA3, root is SDA4, and then home is none. Those are all of the defaults, so it automatically selected. If you go back through after it's done with the auto partition and you look at, just look at the drives in manual partition, you'll see that those are all the correct drives. So just go ahead and choose those unless you're going to be doing something different. So here's the selected drives we're doing. So yes, that's good. You want to format the devices. Yes, we'll go ahead and format them and we'll do EXT. Whoop. Okay, proceed. Say yes. And then for root. Okay. And now we're going to mount. So everything is now mounted. And now we're going to install Arch Linux. So here we can choose Linux, Linux LTS, Zen, or Hardened. We'll just grab the basic Linux. 
and then Linux firmwares. And then here we can select our various file systems, like LVM2 for me. So now you can see that this is the part where it takes a little bit more time is that every single step, it's gonna stop, drop here, download, install packages separately rather than do everything in all one big bunch, which basically means it's going to take a lot more time. But at the same token, it's actually going to get you a lot more customizable options because this will give you more options to choose from than Anarchy Linux does. All right, so you're at the end of that step. At the end of each step, it's going to say press any key to continue. So now we're going to configure it. So you can set your various options here. So this is just set up your host name, set up your keyboard layout, any fonts, localities, time zones, root passwords. You can generate your FS tab or F stab, whichever you prefer it. And then you can go through, configure uh, mirrorless, crypt tabs, just a variety of things. Then you have the option to where to install the bootloaders. You have extras. So those are various things like nano and such. And then you have the option here to install the um, other desktop environments. So this is actually a separate uh, a separate uh, script that it downloads. So this is installing Arch Desktop Environments. So let's go from SourceForge. It's going to grab the, those packages. And then if you go through here, now we can select Console, System, Xorg, Desktop Environments. You can see Budgie was not in our list. So it's just once you're done on your install, boot up a terminal, um, sudo pacman-s and budgie-desktop. And then display managers, make sure you set those up. After installing any display manager, it's going to ask you if you want to activate that. So that's um, an easy thing, enough thing to do. And then here's the various options that you have to choose from. So that's kind of the setup, and uh, we're not going to go any further on this. It does take about an hour or so to install Arch via ArchFi. And so that one's, uh, it's going to get you a lot more customized system as you have the option to go through every little individual service. So there are our two separate installs. Which one is better? Which one is worse? Well, they both have advantages and disadvantages. ArchFi out of the box is a pure vanilla Arch Linux with every single service you can toggle on, toggle off at will. So it is technically more customizable. It is, however, a little bit harder to use. It is. It takes a lot longer. If, if you're pure purpose is to get a functional arch system up, go with Anarchy. It's just going to save you a lot of time. If you do need to go through all those extra options, if the time is not much of a matter, then going through and using your uh, using your your um, uh, arch by script is going to be the better option for you just for what it gets you, and then you just need to go through. So which one's better? Well, it just depends on which your purpose is. Both of them, though, at the end are going to give you a pure arch install, and it's going to work out well for you. So that's kind of my final take. Let me know your take on these two install scripts in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.